Hello and good evening. Hopefully everyone's got a nice glass of wine and is enjoying the evening so far. It's great to have the legendary Don Boyd and great to have you all at Google. Um, what better to start the evening and talk about the really glamorous topic of insurance? Which I know is something you wake up in the morning and think, I just love thinking about insurance. Well, my job is I have to do that. So what I'm going to do is tell you a bit about the journey I've been on two insurance brands. One that was slightly more challenging. Well, so they've both been challenging in different ways, but one that uh, I think made strategy quite hard to implement and the other that actually we found a way to see real breakthrough in what we've done. I've got some of the work to show you as well. So this is me. So I guess the question I'd ask myself as we go into this, when we look at strategy, is have we become a bit addicted to the short term? And I'll give you examples of how I battle with the short term versus the long term as a client. When you're working with an agency and you want to deliver a step change in your brand and a step change in what you're doing, how do you balance the immediate need for things now and the balance of something that you need in the long term? This is just a quote from EY. But I think the critical bit is, if a brand becomes too focused on the short term, actually, it has a fundamental issue and damage on your longer term value creation. And I think for the people in this room, one of the real challenges is how do you work with a client that has to achieve that short term, but importantly is looking to the long term too, without sacrificing what goes in the middle. And I'll give you a very real example of that right now. So I worked 10 years ago on um, a great insurance brand called More Than. It's a brand I still love now. It's a brand we don't hear as much about. And we had a really good strategy. We were going to take on the insurance industry and do more. The brand's called More Than, so you can't do less than. You inherently have to do more than other people. You know, you can't be the less than or the same as or just about okay as. It's more than. So the strategy was about we do more. We're going to do more. We built a really good strategy as a marketing team with the agency at the time, VCCP. Great agency, love them to bits. Um, but the challenge was we were facing into a real sales challenge. We had really big targets. We had to grow. So what happened? The wheels just started to come a bit off the wagon. We got this strategy. Yeah, we sort of believe in it, but you're not hitting the sales numbers. You're in January the, the 5th, now we're February the 5th, we're not quite on the numbers, so what we're gonna do? So we end up in a world where well, the brand ads are right, but we wanna put the DRTV ads into the brand airtime because they're gonna sell stuff, all right? So this brand stuff's great, but I wanna sell some stuff. We were on price comparison sites. Well, that's an easy way because Money Supermarket do the advertising. We put more money into aggregates as well. We did once, and I'm happy to admit this, email the entire email database because the view was they've got a pulse and they need insurance. So let's email the entire database. <laughs> They're alive. They want to buy something. Let's sell them stuff as well. And we emphasized a lot on short-term sales incentives, what the things we could give away to try and, and sell stuff as well. And ultimately, more and more money was siphoned on the brand. Now, we did do quite a lot of work to try and stem this. But I guess the example I'll use, as I come on in a minute to talk about Aviva, is how easy you can go on this slippery slope if you're not careful if your business isn't really bought in at the deepest levels to the strategic thinking and what you're doing right through the organization, if it just stays within the marketing team and it's seen as something quite clever and okay in advertising but really is a bit disposable, you end up in a world where some of these things are quite funny and I bang my head the desk thinking we went down this road, but actually you can see how it happens. I'm not quite bought in, I want my sales, therefore you've got all these things you need to do, including emailing the entire database. So just so I've covered, what, what really was sort of going on in that scenario? Well, there was a lack of buy-in across every bit of the organization to the strategy. So as a marketing team, we'd gone, bloody love this. It's amazing. I mean, this list, hair's on the back of my neck. I'm going to start crying in a minute. This is so good. But really, had the business bought into it? Well, no. Right at the levels of the organization, when push comes to shove, not everyone had bought into it as well. Selective amnesia. Did I really see that presentation? Did you really say it was going to do that? I'm not sure I remember that. I'm so busy at the minute. And then leaders change. Well, you know, so, well, and everything moves on. Unrealistic goals. That obviously hurts as well. Um, lack of alignment on what you're really trying to do in the business. Disconnect between different departments. And at the time, we had a real lack of good stuff to talk about. So I guess I'll sum it up is, you know, if, if you're working with a client and you're trying to sell in a strategy, it sounds obvious, but who's, who's really bought into it? Are they really invested in it? Are they really going to see it through? And have you really sold it into all the right people you need to? Or, bless you, I'll tell you what, is that, is, that the after, is that the aftershave again, isn't it? It's always good. Um, I think just, just the watch out is make sure everybody's bought in. So I'm now going to take you on a bit of a slightly different journey of how we've worked with Adam and Eve on um, something different in another sector. Well, this, oh, sorry, I did put this slide in as well. But this, you've probably all seen this before, but this is a slide I love. I've worn it out in many presentations, just arguing that if you do 
what we were ending up doing at more than where you just invest in the short term you're on a bit of a highway to hell you get stuck in this cycle of short termism and you'll get you won't do badly to start with you'll get some growth coming through but it's just not sustained you get stuck in this cycle of doing the same stuff and you don't break away from the pack with your brand at all you just get stuck and things get eroded so thinking for the long term is great it sounds easy it's quite hard as well and then good old Jack Wells, you can't beat a quote from good old Jack. Anyone can manage short, anyone can manage long. Balancing the two is what management is. And that, as a client, that's what I've got to do. And for the guys in this room, if you're working with a client like me, I need your help to balance those two things because the world I'm in is dragging me here all the time. Even in Aviva at the minute, dragging me into the immediate need to hit some numbers and do some stuff. And I'm trying to desperately hold on with the agency to this, the long term. Where are we going? What's the health of the brand? What's the future of what we're trying to do? And how do we get there? Right, so let's go yellow. Let's talk Aviva. So good thinking. So this was Aviva in 2015. Um, and I'm not going to knock it. You know, I've been in the business now a year. You know, the business had Paul Whitehouse, I think it was eight years. And actually, it was a really hard-working campaign. People still would remember it today. Paul Whitehouse, whether he was dancing or doing all sorts of wonderful stuff. You know, there's quite a lot of strong recognition. Your category leading attribution, we were growing, um, and it was driven by sales promotions. You know, 12 weeks free, different offers. It was not a bad campaign. But the challenge was, and this is something we use the brand impact index, is the brand overall impact and health was in decline. We weren't actually really standing out from the crowd enough in a market where consumer trust and consumer view of the category was going down, which is quite a big challenge. So what did we do? We um, did a pitch and interestingly sometimes it takes a pitch as a catalyst for change in a business and through that pitch we appointed Adam and Eve and actually good thinking came out of that work because actually how do we move away from this not a bad vehicle but something that was quite promotionally led um, wasn't helping us grow in the longer term against the category we needed some fresh thinking we need some good thinking I'll let you read that for yourselves I never been a fan of reading from the slides but in essence um, this is just a category statement about the fact that the industry isn't really looking out for its customers enough and actually building relationships in the long term. It's too focused on sales incentives, but actually at the heart of what Aviva does is good thinking in the interest of our customers in what we provide, is what we do, and the innovations that we come up with. And how we wanted to bring that to life was in the real world. So not with a character, not with a gimmick, but actually in real world situations of Aviva practically getting alongside you and going, you know what, this is what good thinking is, this is how we help you, this is the difference we can make in your lives. And it's not just an ad campaign, and that's the other important bit. When this was sold into the organisation, it wasn't sold in as a strap line. Yeah, great, we're going to have good thinking on the end of our ads, and people nodding along going, oh, that sounds really good. And this was sold in as a philosophy and a mindset for the business. So clearly what we couldn't do is just say yeah we do good thinking now actually we have to back it up with proof point after proof point after proof point and that's what we've worked really hard to do and at the heart of it is actually not just tackling i guess ills that customers would have about our product category but actually bigger deeper things that are societal issues that we had relevance to tackle you know, clearly things that we could own well actually what about driving safer on the roads people dying because they are using a mobile phone behind the wheel and helping people that I was going to I'm going to do one of Dom's polls here how many people in this room are saving into a pension I love you guys all right that's good that isn't representative of the UK a lot of people just aren't saving for tomorrow and aren't even thinking about tomorrow saving a pension so shouldn't our duty as a provider of pensions be to wake the nation up and say maybe you should start thinking about your future and maybe we could help with that so that's at the heart of the missions and what we're doing. And edgy executions, which you'll see in a minute. We've got to stand out. I describe it as water cooler moments. You know, I want people to go in to work, think, feel, and breathe insurance and think about it. And actually, did you see that thing last night? It doesn't tend to happen in financial services, but it's happening with the work we're doing. So we did a drive challenge. That's how the campaign launched in January last year. We set a couple of families against each other. We have this thing called the Drive app. It scores you. So if you're ever bored at the weekend, you want to find out, am I a good driver? And you want to compare whether you're a better driver than your partner or your friend. The Drive app does that. You can see how you drive, how you brake, how you take corners. It gives you a score. That score then gives you a discount off your insurance. But it's just really helpful. It's our version of good thinking. So yes, it does help you save money if you want to dial back to the basics. But it helps you drive better. And it does mean 
and we know this statistically, people are driving safer and the roads are safer and there's less road deaths, so it has a greater benefit with good thinking. Now, alongside doing that challenge, which worked really well and we've seen great results from, we've done quite a lot around social and content to try and bring this whole topic to life around making Britain's roads safer. So I'm gonna show you something that we put out just on our social channels. It's performed really well, but pretty quite unexpected and quite different from Aviva. So you'll totally start to see where we started to go. Oh, why? I have kids. If you're texting on the phone and you run over my child, go out, jump in that car and batter the f out of you. This is a good idea, isn't it? I want right. to make it legal for people to use their mobile phones while they're driving. No, I don't agree with it. Not just phone calls, text messages. If you close your eyes, you can't mm -hmm. see anything, and that is dangerous to drive like that. If you do that, mm -hmm. what can you see? Everything, right? You can see everything. So use that eye for the phone. And you're not going to text while you're driving, are you? Well, they say if you do it at night, then the light from the phone shines on your face and makes you more visible. What's more distracting? having your phone in your hand or having it on the passenger seat and it's ringing and you don't know who's calling. This is a good idea. That's a good, no, it's a good idea. I promise that's a good idea. I just told you I don't agree with you. So no, why you, do you expect me to sign? If you can walk while you're texting, why can't Sorry. you drive while you're texting? No, it's too dangerous. No. 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 Do you use social media? But seriously, why would you be promoting this? Hi guys, can I stop you for just one second? I think the scooter drivers should be allowed to text as well. Make driving on the mobile phone legal! Honk honk! Come on guys. Huh? Honk honk! Let's change the world. All right, 15 pounds to sign the form. What's slightly funny is there were people that did actually sign his petition as well, so um, <laughs> clearly thought it was a great idea. So that's just an example of how we could start to own a topic, really demonstrate good thinking, but something that's quite different for the brand and quite different for the category. I'm conscious of time, so just quickly going to play this next spot, which is our ad that's been on air since January that just carries that theme onwards. Today, ex-Formula One driver David Coulthard is helping us with an experiment. Hi. Hi there. Hi there. Hi. We're two guys. Station, please. Is it left or right on the road? That's uh, 53 pounds, please. <laughs> Paying for other people's bad driving. There's no excuse for that. Hope you enjoyed the ride. <laughs> At Aviva, safer drivers could save an average of 170 pounds on our car insurance. Download the Aviva Drive app to see if you could save. Okay, it was David Coulthard, and it was real people as well, who uh, we did vet to make sure they weren't going to have heart failure before we did film them in the car, but um, filmed on the mean streets of Liverpool. So. Some stats, it's starting to work. I talked about the brand impact index. We were in decline. We're seeing that start to shift up. We're getting some great ROI coming through, year on year growth coming through. And what's great is just the hours people are spending on social. So again, I'll let you read that for yourself. But it's starting to work. And why it's working is we're, we're a year in and the business is behind it and believes in what we're doing, particularly what we're doing in social. And the sort of work we're doing, I mean, edgy, uh, we've really pushed the boundaries on the work we're doing deliberately to create standout which is actually creating some really interesting conversations in the business. I think if you went back a couple of years ago, we wouldn't have done something like the bad petitions thing you saw a minute ago. We wouldn't have done the sort of work that you'd seen with David Coulthard either, because there's a great belief in what we're doing, the strategy's bought into, and we're living and breathing it. And this has all come out of a you know, great work in the last 12 months. So, so I think just my learnings, I guess, in comparison to, to, to more than, I think, you know, why is this starting to work for us? Well, we have got strong exec sponsorship. People are believing in what we do. Uh, and actually the process to buy into the strategy was quite extensive up front. So it wasn't a quick thing, it was uh, over time as well. We are holding our nerve and I have this constant battle and I've got it at the minute. Uh, how do we balance the need for short-term sales with long-term growth? How do I make that still work and make sure we don't end up doing crazy things like running DRTV ads in brand airtime or emailing the whole database? This third one is really important that I've learned a lot about is within a business as a client, we often forget to market marketing. We're really good at 
I hope, going out and communicating to our customers, but doing a really lousy job of explaining to people what we're doing, why we're doing it, and what's working, what's not working, and what we're doing. So a lot in what we've been doing with the Good Thinking campaign is constantly going back to stakeholders and re explaining to them A, what we're doing, B, what's working, what we're learning, and what we're going to do next. It sounds simple, but often the tools we use just aren't applied internally, and they're really important as well. And the fourth one doesn't hurt. Again, back to marketing, marketing. When you've got success and you're building stories as a client, it's really important to keep going back in and reinforcing. Don't imagine that everybody is seeing the data you're seeing. It's really important to keep reinforcing that as well. So those are the key takeaways. And then I was asked by Dom to add some more takeaways. So here's my other takeaways in red, because Dom said this, these guys love takeaways. So I thought we'll just give you more and more takeaways to take away tonight. So, um, so how are agencies most helpful and unhelpful? I think for me, and this ties back into what we've done with Good Thinking, is feeling like part of the team, getting alongside me as a client, understanding what makes our business really, really tick uh, as well, and really understand and get under the lid of our business and support us in the moments we need it. Where the most value adding? I think I've worked with some agencies where sometimes it's just ideas just feel out of step with where you are. In the business I'm in, there's just constant change. And if you don't understand the levers or the things we're working on, they might have changed even in the last month. So just keep in step with us and what we're doing and what matters as well. And understand the other forces that are at play. It's sometimes not as clear cut where some of this stuff comes from or some of the noise. This bit about be in the trenches with us when it's tough, be there with us. You know, and I think the other bit of sort of a great uh, VCCP, great, uh, great planner who was my conscience in so many moments because as a client, often you can sort of lose your conscience in some moments where you need someone to hold you to account and say, you said you were going to do this with the brand, you said you were going to launch this product or change this thing, and you haven't. Why haven't you done it? And actually having someone to be your conscience is bloody helpful at times to hold your nerve to God. Well, we, and we haven't done that yet. Well, that's really important. So hold on to that. And as a, as a, you know, as a planning and strategist, I think you can really help as a client help do that and be tough on us as well at the right moment. So what do I really need? What do we need? Um, I, I think it's easy to say breakthrough thinking. I talked about support and challenge and equal. Um, I think the bubble bit, and I talk about the business I'm in at the minute. Often as a client, you can get really stuck in this bubble. I work in the business I'm in and all I can think about, and I was half joking, but I do wake up in the morning and think about insurance and none of you do. And what's helpful is having that outside in thinking of, yeah, it's great you do that, but what about this over here, that over here, or this thing I've seen someone else do over here, and frankly, how does that fit with what you're doing? You know, and that understanding of what's going on in our customers' lives and our customers' mindset, often as a client, you can get so caught up in what you do, you can end up losing that as well. And then top tips for delivery, um, the big word is about be curious. And I mentioned this earlier on, really understand our business, get under the skin of our business, understand the levers, what makes us tick, and then use that to add value. Hopefully that's useful. I'm going to hand back to the legend that's Dom now. So thank you ever so much. Thank you.